Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek. Today I'm going to be taking you through what I do to back up my file securely on my Synology NAS unit. So let's get into it. So if your idea of a backup is, well, you don't have one really you know you just spin around in your chair and hope that everything's going to be okay when you've saved it on your computer um you know this really isn't good enough in uh, this day and age certainly with a lot of the cyber uh, attacks that you get and uh, you know your precious files being encrypted in order to extract money from you from evil hackers um you know what you need to do uh, is use something like a, a nas unit you know they're um, especially good at storing uh, lots of files uh, securely. Um, you could still use things like, you know, DVDs, writable DVDs, something like that. But what I'm, I'm going to go through now is basically, uh, you know, what you can do to help protect yourself um, when you've got your new uh, Synology NAS unit and, pro and protect those files. So the way I've got my system set up, um, you know, I've got my nice new uh, DS920 Plus and basically you know i've i've set that up as a, uh, a raid configuration uh, in the software on the uh, on the uh, dsm software and um, as we all know you know raid is not a backup solution uh, raid is a, a way to protect uh, the redundancy i guess you know the resilience of the drives whilst they're in the uh, in the nas unit so you know if a drive fails you've potentially you've know, got the ability to recover some of that however you know what if you have uh, a natural disaster, something like that. You know, your your house goes up in flames, or you know, you have an earthquake, or you know, somebody comes in and comes and steals your NAS unit uh, from where you've got it stored. You've lost everything then. So, the the there are multiple ways you can do this, and you know, there's you can go beyond what I've got set up here. Um, but you know, I think th this is a fairly easy one for most people to get set up, and I, I must say there is a uh, a small cost involved on this uh, you know if you if you do go down this route but I'll show you how much uh, it's actually cost me on a on a monthly basis so far so what I do is I have for all the important stuff on my computer including things like the content I produce for YouTube I have a one-way synchronization process between my computer and the NAS unit um, this is all free, it's all part of the software that you get with the Synology NAS and uh, we'll go through that in just a minute. I'll show you how to get that all set up. And then in addition to that, I then have a synchronization process between um, my uh, Synology NAS and a cloud storage provider. In this uh, instance, it's Backblaze and um, you know that is costing me uh, pennies per month really to store the really important uh, things that you know I'll never get back things like photographs uh, and, and documents and things like that so um, that's what I'm doing in terms of a um, in terms of a backup plan and uh, it's a really simple process to step, uh, set up and uh, we'll go through that now okay so because this is a two-stage process you um, you can either just have it set so you're going to sync your uh, files from your computer to your NAS unit or you could go that one step further and then have that synchronized with a cloud storage service in this instance I'm going to go through Backblaze uh, but you can apply all of these steps or you can just do the first half um, or you could do the second half if you're going to, if you're going to um, just copy files onto your NAS, uh, your NAS unit by yourself. Okay so to uh, synchronize your computer to your NAS uh, unit what you need to do you need to go into DSM and uh, go into your package center and you want to install an application called Synology Drive uh, Server so just click on install just let that get uh, downloaded and installed on your system after a few seconds what you get is you just get this little prompt here that, um, about the firewall notification so you want to uh, allow that uh, to go through uh, if you then uh, you then get a prompt uh, security enhancements for newly installed packages uh, better supported after you've refreshed the web page so if you just say yes for, for that and your dsm will just uh, quickly refresh 
and then you can go back into your package center you install packages and just open up the Synology Drive server again so we just open that and uh, you just read these three screens if you uh, if you need to um, they just say you know basically you know, some additional functionality you can set up um, but basically what you'll get to then is you'll get to this page in the admin console which is your team folders so um, I'm going to um, basically enable the synchronization on my YouTube and my photographs folders so we'll just click on that and you, you get some version control settings here um, you know it's these are entirely up to you you have to think about you know how many iterations back you want to be able to uh, you know uh, recover files if you need to so I'm just going to leave these as the default and um, you know you might need to go into um, your control panel to go and set up user privileges on this um, but you know that really depends upon what account you've actually gone and used uh, for um, for this this whole process and then um, I'll just enable it on uh, my photographs as well okay um, so they're the, the main bits there the other page is basically you've got some information there um, you know with regards to uh, the, the synchronization server itself uh, which you can look at and you've also got your client list as well so so I have no client software installed at the moment so this is the next step that you need to do and um, you need to go to the Synology download center uh, there is actually a link in the in the uh, DSM help for this and you select uh, which NAS unit you are using um, but what you want to do you want to dr download the Synology Drive client so you just download that we'll download the exe and we will uh, run that and uh, I'm just going to install that to default locations default settings and then to run it so click on finish basically once that's installed you'll then get a pop-up screen and you need to put in your uh, NAS name or IP address so then you just need to use your uh, an account with the appropriate uh, permissions and uh, click on the next button and uh, so it's just asking me if I want to use the quick connect well you know I'm not planning on moving this computer around or anything like that so we'll just say no to that I get a warning about SSL certificates so we'll just say proceed through with that and then it checks the username and password so then what you get is you get two options a sync task and a backup task well I'm syncing the files here so we'll, we'll choose sync task um, so you're going to select the folders uh, that I've enabled on the NAS so I'm going to specify the uh, YouTube folder and then um, the folders that we want on the um, the actual computer itself so uh, in this instance I am um, uh, specifying the whole of a drive because uh, that's all my uh, YouTube content is in there so um, and the other thing to do really um, what what I've done is I've unticked create an empty Synology Drive folder okay so basically what I've got set here is um, on my NAS the YouTube folder is going to have a synchronization with everything on Drive H so I'm leaving the on-demand sync enabled uh, so basically whenever I modify any of the files or add a new one or something like that that will get shoved off onto the um, Synology NAS so uh, we'll click on done and then it's just going to apply some changes the only other thing here is um, so this is um, running at the moment um, what I want to do is I want to change the sync rules so um, I'm just pause that and I go into sync rules and the sync mode so at the moment this is a two-way sync and um, what I want is I want uh, that to be um, upload the data to the Synology Drive server only um, 
but to uh, keep any files that I delete locally, I want those uh, going onto the server. Now, you could have a two-way sync. Um, you could have them only coming in from your NAS server. So, you know, if you've got other people loading files onto your server and you want them to go on your computer, it's entirely up to you, your workflow. This is what I'm setting up. This is not, um, you know, necessarily what you need to set up. So, um, and then when I've done that, I will resume that. If we just go back into client list and I refresh that, um, now I've got my client uh, showing there. So we can close that and we can close that there. What will actually happen is you just get this little pop up here as it starts synchronizing files uh, from my machine uh, onto the NAS. And that's what it's doing is its initial task. And then after that, anything that I change will then automatically get uploaded to the NAS. And it's as straightforward as that. There's lots of other settings that you can play around with. Um, you know, you can uh, change how much bandwidth it uses and things like that and how many files it does and, and whatnot. Um, so you can, can configure it to how much or how little you want to overload your network or not. Um, but, you know, it, I think it's a great tool for synchronizing uh, your, your files from your local computer onto your NAS. Okay, so the, the next bit that you want to do then is uh, you're going to want to synchronize your files from your NAS unit to uh, some kind of cloud storage. Now, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the setting up. So I'm using Backblaze uh, for this. So I'm going to go through the setup of Backblaze uh, first because it's just a little bit easier um, to show you there. So um, with Backblaze, so you're using the B2 cloud storage and um, you, I think you can get 10 gigabytes free before you start getting charged. So, um, you know, 10 gig might be sufficient for you, but, um, you know, it is a, um, you know, you need to look at the pricing to see whether that is something that's going to work uh, for what your needs are. So um, I'm predominantly using it just to uh, keep a, an additional storage of uh, files and documents. So what you need to do, set up your account. Uh, I won't go through that process because it is fairly straightforward. Uh, and then when you uh, get in there, you get this uh, screen where you get to create a storage bucket. So uh, this is not your, um, this is not a folder. This is just basically, um, you know, a, an area of cloud storage that you've got that you can actually uh, then put things into. So I'm going to create a bucket and um, I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to set this as being private. Um, I'm not putting any encryption on on this, um, but you know I think if you've got um, you, you know uh, sensitive information, you probably want to consider encryption on that. And um, you know you've also got this object lock as well, so um, you know you may want to enable or um, disable that. I'm leaving it as disabled at the moment, so I'm going to create the bucket. So now you've got your bucket set up. The other thing that you need to do is you need to create a, um, kind of like a, an application key. So this is uh, to allow your NAS unit to be able to talk to uh, Backblaze. So uh, you know, there will be different things on different cloud storage uh, services. But on this instance here, I just need to create a new application key. Uh, and so I need to set it. It's got read and write uh, permissions and uh, you know, we'll leave everything else as default there. So, um, you know, I'll be given a key ID there. Um, the thing to, to note is there is some um, private information. It only appears once, so you need to copy that to your clipboard so that you've got uh, that, that available. And you're going to need that for when you set up the application in your uh, Synology NAS. So you go back into your DSM and you go back into Package Manager. And what you're looking for then is the cloud sync. So you install that, okay, and then you can open it. So um, what you get then, you get to choose from a list of providers. As you can see there, there's uh, Google Cloud, Shared Drive, there's uh, Azure, uh, there's Dropbox, OneDrive, all kinds of stuff there. So uh, you may already have an account set up with somebody else, somebody on this list there. So you, know, you can, uh, 
you know, hook your NAS unit up to one of those. Uh, say I'm using Backblaze. So, um, so then what it's it's then asking for are those uh, parameters um, that were specified in the uh, in the uh, in the, the previous page. So uh, the first one it needs is the key ID, and then it needs the application key as well. And then when you've put those in, you can click on the bucket name and uh, it will have connected to Backblaze and it will give you your bucket name. You put that in. You then need to say, you know, what is it that is your, your local stuff that you're going to be uh, taking. So in this instance, I'm only um, taking the content of the photographs folder. So this is uh, kind of all of the, the stuff that I'm really interested in uh, keeping a an, uh, an external copy of the files and then the remote path um, well you know you can um, just stick it in the root folder if you wanted to or if you've got another uh, folder there and then sync directional um, sync direction is uh, well so you can either have bi-directional um, or you know download remote changes or upload local changes only so I'm going to have this as upload local changes only because I want this just going up into Backblaze. So you can then set a schedule and uh, you know, basically any, any of the blue blocks is going to run and uh, you know, anything that's not uh, being marked as blue uh, it will be suspended. So we'll just uh, set that like that and then click on next and click on apply. And that's it. So that is now uh, syncing one file, it says. And there you go. So it's it's counting up 9,999 files. Now, obviously, prior to this, I've already had this uh, set up. So I, I've actually deleted those files and, and this is resyncing those again. But to give you an idea um, of what the cost is on that, Okay, so for a month's worth of storage um, was uh, 65 cents to keep a copy of all those uh, all those files. Um, so that would have been um, 65 gigabytes there. So take off the 10 gig that you get free. So 55 gigabytes of, uh, of data, uh, photographs, etc. Uh, was costing 65 cents to store those for a month. So quite cheap actually for for an entire year. Um, so once you've got that set there, you can you can close that and um, and that is it. You know that will go away and start syncing all your files. So what's your backup plan for all your documents and your precious family photos and you know emails and things like that? Have you got something similar to what I've gone through today, or have you got something even more advanced than what I've already? gone and described. Why don't you share it down below in the comments. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this video and you know maybe what you're doing yourself. Um, but you know if you've enjoyed this video guys you know hit that like button and uh, you know if you're new here and you're not a subscriber then hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Uh, but as always thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.